Hey guys, my name is Dr. Sam and today I wanted to talk about a very common condition that many people suffer from at some point in their lives, including myself. There are five main treatments for carpal tunnel syndrome and I wanted to teach you the causes, symptoms and how to manage carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel syndrome is the most common compression neuropathy or squashing of a nerve condition in the upper limb. In fact, it's the most common compression neuropathy in humans full stop. There are three major nerves in the upper limb and in carpal tunnel, the median nerve is affected. Many of us have already experienced or will experience symptoms involving the median nerve, usually in the form of finger or thumb tingling that passes quickly. However, if the tingling keeps going for more than a day or two, then carpal tunnel syndrome may be developing. The carpal tunnel is a relatively small passageway in the wrist. It's a busy area with nine flexor tendons supplying the four fingers and thumb, and the median nerve is crammed in there too. It is at this point where the blood supply to the nerve can be squeezed and its function compromised. What are the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome? General pain and aching in your hand and arm, tingling and discomfort in the area of the hand supplied by the median nerve, hand weakness and clumsiness, burning pain at night, relieved by shaking or changing your hand position. Why does it happen at night? It is not fully understood, but is suspected that we make it worse by flexing our wrists or sleeping on our hands. When this happens, we are more likely to compress the median nerve and cause the pain, tingling and symptoms that wake us up. What causes carpal tunnel syndrome? In most cases, we don't know. It is more common in people aged 45 to 64 years of age, but can certainly occur at any stage of adult life. Obesity is a risk factor as is repetitive work involving the wrists. It is more common in pregnancy and menopause, but the relationship to diabetes is less clear. Rarer causes are rheumatoid arthritis and local masses like ganglia. How do we diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome? If you suspect you have carpal tunnel, then it is best to consult with a doctor or hand therapist. Often they will strongly suspect you have carpal tunnel just based on your history. They will examine your hands and wrists to confirm the diagnosis and rule out red flags. What about nerve conduction studies? Nerve conduction studies can be used, but in many places they are only used by specialists. In my home city, they generally don't use conduction studies to investigate carpal tunnel, but this may be different to what is done where you live. Unfortunately, x-rays and MRI are not generally useful to work out if you have carpal tunnel or not. What are the best treatments for carpal tunnel syndrome? All right, <laughs> there are five major treatment options, and I'll start with the simplest measures and move up to the most advanced. Number one. Education. Simply understanding the condition can be a great start. Often it's easy to identify activities that make it worse so that you can then avoid them, <laughs> like repetitive movements or sleeping with your wrists bent. Observation and time may be all that's required for temporary conditions such as pregnancy. Number two, hand therapy. Hand therapists can offer further education and teach you some therapeutic exercises such as median nerve glides. Number three, wrist splints. There is good evidence that wrist splints can be effective in relieving carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms. An off-the-shelf wrist splint can be used, but my personal preference is a customized splint fitted by a hand therapist. Nighttime splinting seems to be the most effective, but the splint can also be used intermittently during the day if it's practical. It's not a good idea though to keep the splint on 24 hours a day, otherwise you may develop wrist stiffness and deconditioning of your hand and forearm. Number four, corticosteroid injection. If non-invasive measures have failed, then it is worth considering a therapeutic injection into the carpal tunnel, and this may provide relief for around six months, although individual responses to injections are highly variable. 
I think they are quite useful in that they help confirm the diagnosis and provide rapid relief of symptoms for some patients. In number five, surgery. Carpal tunnel surgery is usually recommended after six to 12 months of trying non-surgical treatments. However, some people may need surgery earlier. For example, in severe cases where there is unrelenting symptoms or when thumb weakness has developed. And the surgery is usually done under local or regional anesthetic while you are awake. It may be performed by a neurosurgeon, orthopedic or plastic surgeon, depending on their interests. I'd recommend that you talk to your health practitioner sooner rather than later to establish which treatments are best for you. There are risks and benefits to each of the treatments and it's helpful to get a plan that's tailored to you. Getting on top of the condition early can help prevent long-term problems. As always, please give this video a like if you found it helpful, hit the subscribe button for new videos every single week, and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos on Tuesdays. Please let me know in the comments what you want to learn about next, and feel free to check out my new playlist on aches and pains. See you again soon.